Part 3 is an investigation of the integral 1 to infinity 1 over x to some number p, the x. Now, of course, this 1 here could be substituted with any real number. All right, so let's take a look a. a wants us to investigate the integral from 1 to infinity 1 over x. Now, in part a, it's when the value of p is equal to 1. Okay, so let's see what this is. We're going to use the definition. Limit as b goes to infinity. Do you know that when we say b goes to infinity, that actually is a one-sided limit statement? Just FYI. So this is going to be from 1 to b. 1 over x dx equals the limit as b goes to infinity. Antiderivative, natural log, absolute value of x. And we're going to take that from 1 to b. And this equals the limit as b goes to infinity, natural log of b minus natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is 0. But the limit as b goes to infinity of natural log of b goes to infinity. So this guy here diverges. So when with this particular integral, when p equals 1, it diverges. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is the integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared dx. All right, so let's run through this one. This is the limit as Oh, sorry, this is the limit as b goes to infinity, 1 to b, as follows, and this is the limit as b goes to infinity. The antiderivative is going to be negative 1 over x and 1 to b, limit as b goes to infinity. Of, let's see, negative 1 over b minus a minus, so plus 1. And that, let's see, this is going to go to 0, so that equals 1. Oh, very interesting. Let's revisit the um, a1. So if y equals 1 over x, and I take a look at that graph of that, that's going to look like this okay that's this one but if I look at the B graph y equals 1 over x squared let's use a different color for that one that one here is going to look similar and come down like that. So both of these approach an asymptote y equals 0. Here's the uh, x-axis. Both of them approach y equals 0 asymptotically. But in one case, in the yellow case, we say that that area diverges. But in the other case, we say that the area converges. So this red area, we say that the graph is getting there quick enough that it's going to converge. And in the yellow graph, it doesn't get there quick enough, so we're going to say it diverges. Now, if you want to question this or fight this or debate this, you're not alone. This is, I don't want to say a flaw, but this is a debate in the mathematics. We create these definitions, we create these limit statements, but it doesn't always make geometric logic sense. So there is, to some degree, a form of acceptance that um, mathematics, man-made uh, art, used to describe science, there are some holes or some, some things that we want to question in it. This is one of those items. So we're going to use strict definition to say that the first one diverged and the second one converges. All right, continuing along now, let's take a look uh, part C. Looks like I'm still in yellow. So in part C, we have the integral from 1 to infinity. 1 over x to the 1 half dx. 
And I'll talk fast here. This is the limit as b goes to infinity, the integral from 1 to b, 1 over, ah, uh, let's write an x to the negative 1 half power. That should be easier. So then this is the limit as b goes to infinity, 2x to the 1 half, 1 to b. This is going to be the limit b goes to infinity, 2b to the 1 half minus 2. And that, oh, look at that. This is going to go to infinity. So the whole thing goes to infinity. So that is an illustration to hope that you can better understand this, that the integral from a to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx is going to converge. So it converges for, uh, can you think of for what values of p that will converge? For p greater than 1. And diverges for values of p less than or equal to 1. So that 1 is that critical point where if it's equal to 1, it diverges. If it's less than 1, it's also going to diverge. But if it's greater than 1, it, I guess it, you could say that it creates it getting to the asymptote quicker. And then you make the argument that it uh, converges. So this one diverges. Uh, now this, of course, is for a, can be really any number, but I'm just going to, for argument's sake, say that a is greater than zero, so we're not talking about uh, asymptotic behavior. So let's say a is greater than zero, a real number, and we're going to establish this. This is not a real name. Nobody actually calls it by this except for me, and I'm going to ask that you know this name. We will establish this this as a p integral remember this is not a real name i'm going to ask you to use this made up name in formal proofs see if you get to used to this name p integral then when we get to the section where there are p series which is a real name you will um, be able to uh, transition quickly having used p integral enough. So an example of that we would say that the integral from 3 to infinity of 1 over x to the fifth dx without doing any work we can say converges by p integral with p equals 5. And 5, of course, is greater than 1. And if it were 1 fifth, we would say it diverges by p integral with p equals 5, which is less than or equal to 1.